Ever heard of Marion Island? It's South Africa's wildest, most remote outpost, a volcanic landmass rising from the Southern Ocean about halfway to Antarctica if you draw a line south from Port Elizabeth. Whenever South Africa's polar exploration vessel, the S.A. Agullis, sets sail for Marion, there is much pomp and ceremony at the VNA waterfront. This time even more so because of all the government VIPs and media personnel on board. The reason for the special voyage? To officially open the newly constructed scientific research station on the island. The voyage to Marion takes nearly five days and there isn't really much to do. Meal times are a highlight. You eat way more than you should. If you're really desperate, you can work off the guilt in the tiny gym in the bowels of the hull. Try running on a treadmill on a rolling ship. When the hold is empty, it becomes a volleyball court. The competition is fierce between the cooks, the officers, and the helicopter crew. The reigning Agulhas champions are the top dogs, and they're quite proud of it. The ship itself is nearly 35 years old, and it's approaching the end of the service. To walk through the engine room is to experience the golden age of mechanical power. It's so big and loud, you can't believe there are people who know which knob to turn and which lever to pull. Running off diesel, the Agullis consumes about 12,000 litres a day. The bridge is also amazing. Like the cockpit of a Boeing, Captain Freddy Lichtelm has everything at his fingertips and a commanding view of the bow and the ocean. Common areas on the ship include the library and the passenger lounge, where most people zone out during the day. At night, between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., it becomes a sociable bar area. Sometimes a little too sociable. Cabins are compact. Up to four people share a space smaller than the average office, with a bathroom the size of a voting booth. When word got out early one morning that we were close to the island, everyone rushed out onto the deck into a fierce gale and driving rain. And here we have it. We've pulled in close to the base and hopefully the helicopters will be able to fly. Later in the afternoon, the wind died down enough for the ship to move close to the shore where we had a good view of the new and the old base. There are no safe places to berth on Marion, so everything is flown across the island by helicopter. The Russian-built Kamov can only fly when weather conditions permit and the weather wasn't playing along. We had to wait nearly two days on the ship, in sight of the island, until we got our chance to fly across. When we landed on the island, we were given a tour of the new research station. The generator room, kitchen, lounges, bry area, accommodation, gym, science labs. There's even a sauna and a jacuzzi. The new research station cost 200 million rand to build and will provide an invaluable hub for the important scientific work that happens on the island, from meteorology to zoology and higher grade stuff like space science. Walking around on Marion is tough. The weather can change in an instant and the island is predominantly made up of mires, spongy patches of earth. No one ventures outside without gumboots and waterproof pants. <laughs> On our first afternoon, we walked to Tripot Beach, to a colony of king penguins. We also saw some enormous wandering albatrosses engaged in a fascinating courting ritual. Thankfully, the weather cleared up the next day for our walk to Ship's Cove, a protected bay near the research station. Sooty albatrosses breed on the grass-covered cliffs and there is a colony of king penguins on the beach below. In the afternoon, we hiked up to the summit of Junior's Corp, a volcanic cinder cone behind the base. It was a hard slog, but the views from the summit were awesome. We've made it to the top! On our last morning on the island, we went for a short walk to see some elephant seals on a nearby beach. They're massive capable of diving to more than a thousand meters in water that is borderline freezing. With regret, we all said goodbye to the members of Marion 67, the 67th overwintering expedition, and squashed back onto the helicopter for a short flight back to the ship. I'm not sure if I would enjoy spending a whole year on the island, but two days is the other extreme. It felt like we'd barely arrived.